How many filmmakers do you know who make a living making movies? So I've had several clients who have gone on to you know great careers in making films. Um, I sold Shaka King's first film, Newly Weeds, who went on to do Judas and the Messiah. Um, one of Mike Flanagan's early films, Absentia, who now um, made this the the um, the Shining um, uh, sequel, um, and lots of other great horror films and uh, and series for Netflix. Um, I, I I co-produced and helped sell several films with Ron Bergman, who's a producer. He, he's now partnered with Ryan Johnson, and they did. Um, um, Star Wars Eight and um, Looper and several other and Knives Out and several other great films. Um, so I have a handful of clients that have gone on to to have you know great Hollywood careers. Um, I have a few clients as well that still make movies. They're still trying to make that one that graduates to the studio level, but still making indie films. Um, some. Some still very indie, some kind of in the quasi Hollywood indie world of catching talent and having sales agents, you know, pre-sell their move, movies. There's lots of those movies that kind of out there that don't bubble up but still kind of make money in strange ways. Um, and um, and then there's a lot of people that are one and done, um, just because it was so such a big effort to get that first one out there, and. Um, they just never could get quite back to making number two. Um, that's partly because it's just hard to make a film that, that makes money. And, um, and I think it's, it's easier when you're young. I like to bootstrap it and do it for nothing and get all, call in all your favors, but it's hard to call in the favors twice. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a mix. Sure. And if you have debt from the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's difficult. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, and most people I know, were, I think most films I rep were mostly equity. Most films tend to be have found an equity investor to make the film as opposed to running up their credit cards. So it's not debt per se and that they have to pay it back. They just have disgruntled um, investors, maybe, but, um, or not overly happy. But, um, but, um, yeah, I think um, it's uh, yeah, it's just t- it's just not it's not easy to make a movie, and it's um, um, I'd say you know yeah, I don't know what the percentages are, but I'd say probably seventy percent, eighty percent, you know, don't go on to make a second film, at least. Mm, wow, that's that's high. Uh, that's unfortunate, but yeah. yeah. But there's just a lot of stuff that I mean, we've got a lot of movies out there and it's not that like they don't go on to do great things other ways right like it's you know um same i've definitely had clients like like well i made this film but i'm never doing it again like that they that's the way they feel after after making for one like it's just it was a lot to to get that one off the ground whatever that felt like to them so Sure. Yeah, it's not always a sad story. It's sometimes just <laughs> what they choose. They just choose a new path. Right. They got it out of their system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. What's the budget range of the movies you typically work with? Yeah, the range is micro to like almost nothing to mm, several million, three, four million. I'm maybe a couple times I've had seven million dollar films, but pretty rare. How does a half million dollar movie make its money back? So um, there are lots of potential ways to make it back, but um, for a half million dollar movie, you most likely need to get it into a major festival and have someone pay you that and more back up front. Because if you most half million dollar films don't make their money back, so that's you know, this is half a million dollars. It, you know, implies no cast really, right? Um, that I mean, when I say no cast, I don't mean there there are people in the movie, but there's no names in the movie per se that help sell it, and that's 
you're going up against a lot of independent films out there that have names that were made at $2 million. And even those movies don't get, sometimes don't get a half million dollars for their US sale. So you're really up against it. It's really, it's tough. But I have had plenty of half million dollar movies that made, you know, 100,000 in the transactional VOD world. The distributor managed to sell to a, um, a cable entity for a couple hundred thousand and then it made more money on AVOD to get to that half million dollar number. Um, you know, I'm sorry, AVOD? Sorry, oh, advertising a, video on demand. And that's where the ads play? That's where the ads oh, play. Oh, and you can't Correct. skip. Okay, yeah. great. Sorry. Um, are there certain films that are domestically made but they are hits overseas but they're not here? It's pretty rare these days. Um, the One of the reasons I decided to get into domestic sales as a producer rep as opposed to doing international sales was I saw it going down um, 15 years ago. Um, um, you know, there was a day when international sales was major and talking about we're talking about true indies here okay not there's still a market overseas for films with names and quasi independent films made by hollywood production companies we are talking about true indie films um, there's barely a market now overseas and that's partly because at one point we we used to be able to sell almost anything overseas 25 years ago the this is you know, there were cable channels around the world and um, video stores around the world that needed content. And US producers were the only ones that could make them at a price. And we were the only ones really doing it in mass. And so we were flooding the world with our content. So fast forward past, you know, um, the writer strike creates the reality television and the cost of production all comes down and countries around the world start making their own content for their own communities, there's just, not, there's just no demand anymore at all for true independent films. Um, there's still a pretty good, I won't say good, but there's still a business for films in the $3 million and up range that are made you know, in, not with a, with a studio, but independently in Hollywood with a name attached to it where they can make sales around the world that come up to 50 to 70% of a budget. But that doesn't exist for true independence. Even if they get someone and they pay them a day rate, maybe they weren't, they're not an A-lister, but they're recognizable enough? Yeah, these days you, it's like, to me, for, for sales purposes, it's really A-list or nothing. Um, I think when you're when you're if you're gonna if you're casting for name value and it's that level, you should also be making you should also really uh, be getting them because they're really great for the role. Um, m much more important than what their name value is, and you're hoping that the combination of them being um, great for the role and a little bit of name value catapults it into another sphere than the everything else out there um, but yeah I see a lot of films that cast B level talent I should say not level but you know value talent um, for that purpose and it just doesn't didn't make a difference right I'm just thinking of overseas as well so it sounds like maybe 15 16 20 years ago yeah we could do that easily Back but then, and there was a you know there was a day when you could just tell an international uh, distributor, "Oh, I've got so and so in it," and and they just believed you, right? And that it, they didn't even know that the person had value um, or not. And that's how you know that's how West World it was at one point, you know, um, or Wild, um, but they're all much more sophisticated now. Um, they all know exactly what they need and what their audiences want and who's worth what and so it's it's really kind of you know again there's again going back to those three million dollar level films where you know there are some actors that have kind of popped up in value because they were in big studio films and so there's a certain recognizability a certain name value that's still there but they're not getting you know they're not leading roles in 
in big studio movies. They still are trying out for them. Maybe they're trying to be the next Marvel guy or whatever, but they're not getting it, but they still have some value. So for a few years, they'll be castable in that kind of budget range. And usually in thrillers or horror films or you know, elevated horror, you know, something very commercial action as well. Um, but, um, but it's, uh, but that list is pretty, it's a pretty small list and it changes and it's subjective too. I find that like, just because one sales company has an affinity for one level, one actor with a little bit of name value, they might have that affinity because they had a film last year that they sold with him that did well. But the sales agent over here doesn't have that experience and didn't, didn't, hasn't made a film with that guy. So they don't have this, put the same value on him that that other company does. So it's not like a, you know, a where, like you can't rely on IMDb scores um, for value. They really, you know, sometimes they correlate, but most of the time they don't because people pop up and down on that list um, pretty wildly now. With faith-based films, is the only place to sell them is to certain networks? Yeah, I'm not that conversant in faith-based stuff. I've never sold a faith-based film. Um, from what I understand, um, you know, there's a mega church that kind of, um, there's one or two of them that have done, you know, quite a good job in the past of, of, of creating these faith-based films for their, um, their audiences. And, and screening those films for the churches as a way to create a groundswell for selling off the ancillary rights later. Um, and, um, and, and I think that there's, um, there are faith-based production companies that have kind of figured out the formula and the name value that they need and can kind of and, and know how to do that. Um, but if someone came to me with a faith-based film, I'd say, hey, you, you know, um, if it if it also works for a secular audience, I know where to go with it. But if it's purely faith based and very or very overtly faith based, there's better there's there's routes that I don't really know that much about. 